check this out. Mom was doing some cleanup in her bedroom and uh, she came across her old camera. This is a Minolta Maxim 3XI 35mm camera. It was bought in 1994, brand new, uh, by Dad. He bought it for Mom as a Christmas present, Christmas of 1994. $630 this darn thing cost. And uh, it's a really, really nice camera. Some of the earliest pictures of me were taken with this camera. But uh, it hasn't been used in the past, I'd say probably the past 10 years. This thing hasn't been used, it's just been sitting in its case because mom switched primarily to digital cameras by then. But uh, she dug it out and she thought I might like to try it out and uh, I did and uh, I've actually been having quite a lot of fun with it. Now uh, the uh, Maxim 3XI was introduced in 1991. It was positioned as a uh, low-end SLR camera. It had a big brother, the Maxim 7XI. I don't know what extra features it added though. But uh, the 3XI and the 7XI, they were introduced in 1991, and uh, from what I've read, they were discontinued in 1993. This camera was bought in September of 1994. Mom still has the original purchase receipt. Perhaps it was just sitting on the shelf for several months. But uh, yeah, it's a really nice camera. Obviously being SLR, it's got a removable lens. And uh, this is the stock lens that uh, came with it. Uh, it's, I guess 70 millimeters, although I thought I read online that the stock lens was an 80 millimeter unit. But uh, at any rate, it appears to be a 70 millimeter lens. It's entirely manual zoom, but it is automatic focus. I don't know what the zoom is. From what I can tell, it's probably no more than 5x or so. And uh, something really cool that I read is that, uh, see, Sony bought out Minolta in 2006. And as a result of that, Sony has the right to continue to use all of Minolta's technologies. And as a result of that, uh, current Sony digital SLR cameras will actually work with these older Minolta lenses. The mounting is exactly the same. See, Sony's digital SLR cameras are called the Alpha series, and they're called the Alpha series because this particular mounting system, which Minolta developed, is called the Alpha Mount. And that's why. So yeah, uh, these lenses, these old Minolta lenses, are perfectly compatible with current Sony cameras, and that's really cool. Likewise, uh, you can put a current uh, Sony lens on these cameras. These were uh, very good cameras for their time, and actually by today's standards, with uh, film cameras, for those who still enjoy film photography, uh, this particular camera, as well as its big brother, are actually still quite highly regarded. Um, from what I've read, they were not the most reliable uh, cameras. There are a few things that can go wrong with them. I guess as with anything over time, this camera is 20 years old now. But uh, this one still works absolutely perfect. Uh, down there, there's the switch to switch uh, between automatic and manual focus. That's the button to unmount the lens. That switch there is to uh, change the aperture. This camera uh, also has automatic shutter speed and automatic aperture, but you can do manual shutter speed and aperture if you want, which I really like. I never use automatic shutter speed and aperture on a camera. I always do manual. And uh, that's the power switch. It has a 10 second timer. That's the uh, flash mode by default. This has an automatic flash, but uh, you can use manual flash if you want. This does have a built-in flash. If I push this button down here, oh, the camera's going to be turned on, so let's turn it on. There, you heard it. Press the shutter button, or flash button. And there the flash pops up. You just push it back down. So I'll turn it off here. And then this switch here, which normally on a modern camera is where zoom would go. Well, this has no automatic zoom, but uh, that's where that's the switch to change the exposure or the shutter speed. This is uh, this mode button to switch between automatic mode, uh, aperture priority mode, uh, shutter priority mode, or entirely manual. And of course, the shutter button. Now, something else really interesting. You see these two vertical metal bars here. That's an actual sensor. And uh, what it controls is, when you have your hand resting on that sensor, it enables the automatic focus. 
And uh, if you let go of that sensor, so basically take your hand off the camera, uh, it disables the automatic focus and keeps the focus still. So that's kind of cool. Um, this has automatic motorized film advancing as well as film rewinding when the film's all done. You do have a, uh, a, a manual override film rewind button there if you want to rewind the film before it's finished. That's where the battery goes. This takes a, uh, I'm not sure if I should take the battery out, but it's a 6 volt lithium battery. It's a Duracell number 245 I think it is. And according to the manual, this thing, we still have the manual for it. According to the manual, it's uh, good for like 60 rolls of film or something. There, when you uh, put on the manual focus, there you go, and there's your macro mode. The macro on this lens isn't that great. You, can, you have to be about this far away to get a clear focus uh, when you're all the way into macro mode. But uh, yeah, it's really nice. I'll turn it on here. And uh, oh, there's the display. I'm in aperture priority mode. Battery indicator lights up to show that the battery's good. I'm on the tenth. I've already taken nine pictures. I'm on the tenth, ready to go. That's the uh, aperture I have it set to. Uh, yeah, this is a really nice camera. I've actually had a lot of fun using it. I'm hoping maybe Mum will let me uh, keep using it. I'll buy film for it and uh, I'll just use it. Currently, the film I have uh, in it, it was a brand new roll when I put it in. Mum bought years and years ago, but I, of course never got to using it because she, she switched to digital. But it's uh, Fujifilm 400 ISO. Now I personally, if I was buying film for this camera, I'd buy the smallest ISO I could find, probably 100. But uh, hey, 400's just fine. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to take a walk down to the new highway, and uh, we'll take a picture of the uh, new highway. Well, here we are at the new highway. The viewfinder has several LED indicators. Um, it'll show when the camera is in the process of focusing. Uh, it has an LED indicator to show when the focusing is good and uh, it also has indicators to show if uh, the picture is going to be underexposed, if it's going to be overexposed, or if it's going to be just right. So uh, yeah, that's really nice. I quite like that. So this camera has safeguards to uh, let you know if you're not going to get a good picture. So, I'm going to take a picture of the, uh, the highway here. So let's uh, turn it on. Oh, take the lens off first, or the lens cap, I mean. Turn it on. Okay. I assume I should just switch it to infinity focus. I'll, uh, I'll put it on the lowest aperture, even though I might have to put it at a higher one since it might be too bright. If I put it up to my eye, it says the focus is good and Oh, no, I gotta set my, uh, see that blinking 2000 there? There was a blinking 2000, that's the fastest shutter speed, 1 over 2000, so I gotta turn my aperture up a bit. I'll go to 6.7, see how that does. There's also an indicator to let you know you're on manual focus. Alright, it says focus is good, and oh my, my shutter speed's still too fast. Also notice how it uh, it's continually updating the shutter speed because I have the camera pointed at the ground. Let's go with 9.5 aperture. Focus is good and we have a 1500 uh, shutter speed. And go. So that was it. There's our picture. Just because I'm curious, if I put it on automatic focus here. Uh, okay. Yeah, see, when it's on automatic, regardless of what you, how far away the subject is, it doesn't quite go to infinity. It goes just a little bit short. And I'm not sure why. Ah, see that there? That time it went all the way to infinity, but most of the time it stops just quite short. And I'm not, I don't think it should. I think it should go all the way to infinity. I don't know. I'll take uh, one last photo of the highway. I'll zoom all the way out and uh, let's see. I'll put on manual focus. 
And let's see. Oh, got to turn my aperture up a bit, I guess. It hit maximum shutter speed again. I'll do a 13 aperture. And it says focus is good. And we're at a 1 over 750 shutter. I'll wait until some cars go by. Okay. And... There. So I've done half the roll now. And uh, I think now I'll head back up to the house. And now we're back home. So uh, yeah, this is a really nice camera. I quite enjoy using it. I uh, can't wait to get them developed and see if the pictures I'm taking are actually coming out as good as I hope they are. But uh, yeah, I hope Mom lets me uh, continue to use this. I'll uh, buy my own film for it and everything. That'd be pretty cool. So there's the Minolta Maxim 3XI SLR camera from 1994. Hope you guys enjoyed. Alright, it's a trivial amount of time later. And uh, I finished that roll of film. And I was able to send it in to a local store and uh, get it developed. The local Shoppers Drug Mart, who uh, Mom always sent uh, her films into to get developed, still does uh, accept film and uh, sends it to a Fuji film lab, I don't know where, uh, to get it developed and they come back about two weeks later. And uh, that's pretty nice that they still do that, but unfortunately I think that's the first and last time I do that because it cost me $14.11 to do that single roll of film, $12.49 in tax. And uh, because, you know, because the demand is so low, uh, they don't, you know, you used to have options as to what kind, what size prints you wanted, or if you wanted prints at all, or if you wanted a, a digital scans on a CD. But now, because demand's so low, they offer one package. You get four by six prints and a digital CD with uh, scans of the photos. But uh, that's the form that was made up when I first sent it in. 35 mil, 24 exposures, Fuji, C41 uh, uh, development process. I got a matte finish on the photos. So that was it. And then the photos themselves are in here. And uh, they give you the negatives, which is nice. So there's all the negatives in there. And then in the main pocket here, here's a CD. I think also because demand is so low, see I'm pretty sure the CD used to have a fancy Easy Picks logo on it, like that. And as a matter of fact, if you look on the package there, there's a little picture of the CD. I believe the CDs used to look like that, but I guess again, because demand is so low, they just give you a basic CD with a batch number and a date on it. With a <laughs> There's like literally no label, it's just the reflective coating, same as on this side. And uh, you can see there, the burn of the CD only comes out a tiny bit indeed. Unfortunately, the digital scans are quite small. They're only 1.5 or 1.6 megapixels in size. That's okay for stuff like the internet, but uh, you know, I I would have personally been happy if they were at least like four megapixels. But uh, especially for the price I paid. But what can you do? Um, I'm going to show you most of the photos. I'll I won't bother showing a couple in this video, but uh, I'll show you the rest of the photos. And uh, I'll do that by putting the digital scans from this CD up in the video. And if you haven't noticed already, um, I have rendered this video in 1080p so that uh, you can see the uh, photos at as high resolution as I can make possible. So if you haven't already, uh, you can switch to 1080p now and uh, we'll take a look at the photos. So here's our photos. Luckily, they, uh, they make at least they they make the digital scans from the straight from the negatives not from the prints so that's nice they give you this here this is a photo index this shows uh, all the photos you've taken all in one thing I got 24 exposures out of that roll so that was nice these first four here these these weren't exposures these are you know the beginning of the roll which of course was exposed to light we've got some anecdotes in uh, French there pas de photo that would mean not a picture and sous expose, I'm not sure what that means, I'll put it in the bottom, I don't know French. Yeah, I'm really pleased with how the pictures came out, most of them came out really great. So without further ado, let's take a look. So first off, we have this picture of the cat, which uh, came out nice, nothing special, but it came out good. Uh, next we have this picture of the cat, which I really like, I really love how this turned out, I like how the, uh, 
the focusing and the uh, lighting turned out. If you look by the cat's uh, left ear, our left, uh, you can see a blue squiggle there. I'm not sure what that is, but uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. And you can, on the footstool in the background, you can see a couple of rolls of film there in the camera bag. Uh, next is this picture of the frog. Uh, this didn't come out as good as I'd like. Um, I think it, it, I guess the focusing was off a bit. Uh, the camera does not have good macro and uh, I used manual focus and uh, I kind of botched it there, but oh well. Next is this picture of the car. This came out really nice. I'm really pleased with this one. If you look at the windshield and the uh, tires, you can tell that it's uh, 400 ISO film because you can see a bit of the film grain there. That'd look a bit smoother on uh, lower speed film. Next is this picture of a couple of, couple of tiger lilies. This came out really good. I like it. Here's a picture of, I don't know if this is a tiger lily or something else, but uh, I really like how this turned out. And you can see that uh, funny green bug on one of the petals there. But yeah, this is a nice one. I like it. Next is a picture of a bunch of tiger lilies. And uh, it's alright. Nothing special. Next is the uh, picture of the tree that broke after Hurricane Arthur. This came out pretty good. I winged the exposure on it because I was afraid the camera would underexpose due to the sky. So uh, yeah, I, uh, that did, came out pretty good. Next is a picture of the uh, maple tree in the front yard. That came out good. Here's one of the pictures we took in this video uh, of the new highway. Uh, didn't come out that great. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, not entirely happy with that. It's, it's. You know. It's not. It's not really that great. I think I actually made an error in deciding to use manual focus and put it all the way to infinity. I think the camera was correct when it uh, put it just shy of infinity, because uh, I guess the focus kind of works on, kind of like an, an exponential scale. So, indeed, the highway is not infinity. It's far away, but not infinity. And uh, I think I screwed this one up by putting it on uh, infinity focus. Here's the other picture we took of the highway. Same thing, focus. I don't think the focus, uh, I don't think I was right in putting the focus on infinity, but uh, it's okay. Next is a picture I took for Lighting Gallery. This is three colored fluorescent lamps that uh, someone sent me on Lighting Gallery. Uh, Sylvania F14 T12 red, green, and blue from the 1970s. And uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. The colors are nice and everything. Next is a picture of uh, a silkworm nest in a tree. We have a bunch of trees around here with silkworm nests in them. I'm looking at about a dozen of them right now. Oh, this is one of my favorite pictures of a plant in the front yard. And uh, the focusing came out great. I purposely uh, put the uh, aperture at the highest uh, f-stop so I'd get that focusing effect. It came out awesome. I've never used a camera with, with the ability to have such a high uh, aperture before so it's really fun to get shots like this and have them come out good. And if you can't see, you can see a bee uh, on the flowers there as well. But yeah, I'm really pleased with this. One of my favorites. Here's another fluorescent lamp I took a picture of. This is a 1987 General Electric F14 T12D that another person sent me on Lighting Gallery. I took two pictures of this and uh, one of them came out excellent. The other one, the focusing was a bit off, but uh, that's all right. And uh, I winged the exposure on this one as well because I was afraid the camera would underexpose. And I believe I winged the focusing as well and I guess I did good there. This is a picture that greatly disappoints me. It's a vacuum fluorescent display that a friend of mine ripped out of a stereo and gave to me. I'm disappointed in how this came out. I uh, guess I botched it. The focusing and the exposure are both screwed up. I'll have to try this one again someday. Here's a picture of the well in the front yard. That uh, plastic eyeball you see there, when they dug the yard up to put the well there, they filled the yard back up with uh, different dirt, and I guess it's dirt they tore out of someone else's yard. Because uh, in this dirt was this eyeball, as well as a couple other pieces of garbage and t parts of toys and stuff. So I just I set that eyeball on the uh, well, and it has stayed there for a couple of months. It's kind of funny. This picture is another one of my favorites. Uh, very, very beautiful. I think it came out. I love how the focusing came out. Here's a picture I took standing under the maple tree. I was trying to get some lens flare. Didn't quite turn out, but it looks alright. 
Here's a picture of the uh, side of the house with some blue paint splatter. Nothing special about this one, but it came out good. Ah, this picture is another one of my favorites. This is, uh, under, this is, uh, same, standing under the maple tree. And, uh, I, it was another attempt to get some lens flare, but I decided to point the camera almost directly at the sun this time, and I got an awesome effect. Lens flare was, again, not as big as I thought it would be, but you can see in the picture, there is a little bit there, but, uh, that sun, the way the sun made kind of a starburst effect, it looks really cool. And this is the last photo, which uh, kind of disappoints me. If you look in the middle of it, it's, uh, it's a butterfly landed with its wings spread. And uh, I was pretty excited to get uh, that picture, but as you can see, the focusing screwed up. I believe I had it on automatic focus, so uh, I guess it uh, just didn't quite work out there. Oh well. And just something I thought was funny. I don't think it shows up on the digital scan of the negative, but if you look at this last photo here, you can see it. Uh, you can see the end of the film there, uh, on the right side of this photo. Well, that be the photos I took on the Fujifilm 400 ISO film on the Minolta Maxim 3XI. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with how most of these came out. I have since shot two more rolls of film, and I'm halfway through a third. But uh, it's probably going to be a long time before I send those in to get them developed because a, I'm going back to school soon. And B, I'm not going to send them into Shoppers Drug Mart. Way too expensive. I think if I look online, look at some mail order places, I can probably find a place that'll give me the same thing for cheaper and maybe even, you know, give me uh, bigger scans. But uh, for what I got at Shoppers, uh, it was certainly fine. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed the photos and the video. And I'll see you guys next time.